Cooking gets it to Brian. Brian Dribble has to put it up for the buzzer. Is, is this the dagger? <laughs> Gonna be doing a full collab first round mock draft. This is gonna be my first collab one post lottery, so I'm very excited for this because I can't set myself up. It's kind of nice for an unpredictable, uh, unpredictable pick that could be made right after me. Therefore, there's no layups for me to, to automatically give Devin Carter to the Heat at 15 or something like that. <laughs> uh, what's going on, Sean? How are you doing? What's going on, bro? Thanks for having me on, and yeah, I'm excited. These mock, these collab mock drafts are really, really fun. I'm excited to, to do one with you. Yeah, definitely. We did one on uh, Sean's pod before the lottery, which was exciting. And that was funny because we had like recess Shea fall to the end of the lottery. And obviously that would be interesting now who we'd see like go in the top three and we'll see kind of where recess Shea falls here. Um, so yeah. with the first pick, I'll throw it to you, Atlanta Hawks. Is it changed at all or, or is it the big man from France? It's still Sar for me. I think Sar gives you the versatility to go either direction. If you want to just trade Trey Young this summer, you can. Or, you know, you have him and Jalen Johnson, maybe DeJounte to build around. Or if you can't trade Trey, okay, cool. We have Trey and, you know, Alex Sar to build around for our future. So that's really, I think, the pick for me if I'm Atlanta. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I would go Sar specifically too. Like, they just kind of need more big men help, especially if they move on from Clint Capella. But I guess it's like such a big looming question for them is like, who's going to be on this team next year? Is it going to be Trey Young? Is it going to be DeJounte Murray? Is it going to be both? You assume one of them is going to be there. Do you think that they should move trey or dejounte or neither or both if they, if they had an option to i would just move dejounte because i i i'm a lot higher on trey i think than like mm -hmm. a lot of other people because I, I see trey getting talked about like he's not an all-star at the very least right mm -hmm. um so i would trade dejounte trey still one of the better point guards in the eastern conference and i think sar is a, a perfect guy to compliment him with now and DeJounte honestly might have the better market right now just based off like what the perception of the the two players are yeah and like DeJounte is like 30 million a year for the next four which isn't bad at all for what he showed without Trey Young and if it only takes like a first or so to get him like I would buy low on DeJounte but I wonder if like a team like do you think the Lakers would revisit that this offseason I know they were in talks with yeah. like D'Lo at the deadline yeah they would because you probably only have to give up maybe that 29 first yeah. maybe protection on it so it's not like you have to give up i assume it for trey you're giving up at minimum two unprotected or very yeah. like lightly protected ones um all right so at number two i would not do this specifically but i do think it's going to be recess it seems like it's kind of locked that sar and recess are going to be the top two picks in this draft which is cool uh two french prospects going one and two it seems like what kind of uh washington is building there is like these lanky forwards that can shoot the ball they like that in denny um apparently bilal has grown to six nine so i don't think that they're getting a franchise guy with recess but i think they're getting a good complimentary piece who could be a nice floor spacer if they add a center that really can't space the floor at all recess can provide that versatility next him in the front court could play the three could play the four um i don't think he has a super high ceiling in this league definitely they need to bring in a point guard or initiator if they don't bring back tyus jones but i think right now like predicting it it's going to be some way shape or form sar one recession two but if recession goes one it would be sar two so i'm gonna have recession go to the wizards there so we got the rockets at three okay um houston then at three I, I really quickly, I'm curious about your thoughts about this. I don't like the 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 Klingon to Houston talk at three. It for me personally, it just doesn't make sense. Not because Klingon's a bad player. He's seventh on my board, I think, right now. So like value wise, it would be justifiable, mm -hmm. but just fit in situation. I'm like, yeah, I don't like it. I'm I agree. Curious. Like you're gonna invest the third overall pick. This is like one of the main pieces back from the hearted trade into a center that may not even play more than 20 minutes a night for you. That exactly. maybe can't work next to um definitely, I don't know if it could work next to Shangun or Jabari. Like you gotta figure that out. You have Steven Adams into the fold as well. This rocket team is pretty deep with guys that need minutes. And I, I think Klingon of a crowded position wouldn't be a good pick either. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um I'm I'm glad we're on the same page here because I I keep seeing them like that makes absolutely no sense to me. But I think you know where I'm going with this. It's Reed Shepard. One of my more favorite like mocks picks in this draft class. It's Reed Shepard to Houston. Um, really good ball handler. One of the most efficient shooters in this draft class. Even though he is on the smaller side, really tested well athletically at the combine. Uh, really good hands off the ball, which I think is going to eliminate him from being picked at a little bit more defensively. So Reed Shepard, throw him in there. Could be your potential long-term starting point guard once you let uh, Fred Van Vliet walk. Or leave, yeah. rather. 
Yeah, I like that a ton too because I think Shepard's almost the perfect offensive prospect. Obviously, there's like questions of finishing at the rim with his strength, and he's not like the biggest guard in the world. But even on defense, I think he's going to be fine. And if it's a, if it's a spot like Houston where they have Dylan Brooks, you have a Men Thompson like developing as obviously already a great defender already. Like I think you're going to be able to hide his defensive issues there in Houston specifically. And there's no better coach in this top five to probably be under defensively than Ime Odoka. So this is like a beautiful fit, and I love it a lot too, Shepard, to the Rockets. I think it's a great fit, like you mentioned. Uh, that leaves San Antonio at four. This is where I've been like back and forth before on them. I think there's like a chance like you can go Dillingham, you can go Topic. There's a chance if they like Collier or Ton, they can get him at eight and they can prioritize defense here. I'm going to have them go guard. Um, it seems like a lot of people were mocking Dillingham to San Antonio. So I'm honestly going to have that for this mock specifically. I've done Topic myself, but I've seen like, obviously there's a clutch connection. Like he's a clutch client and there could be a connection with him in San Antonio, uh, a good shot creating guard, not known for his defense, uh, maybe a subpar passer right away, but obviously is a good four spacer and Wemby's going to get doubled a ton and Topic, uh, isn't going to be as good of a shooter as Dillingham right away. So I think you're going a little bit of offense here more for shot creation in Dillingham at number four, which I'm still torn if they would go that route or maybe they'd wait guard at eight. Detroit here at five. I'm really freaking bummed out that Zachary Rissache isn't here anymore because I think that's one of, if not the best fits in this draft class. So I'm curious where your head is at here. If I'm Detroit, I you maybe consider, <laughs> I don't want to use the word reach, but reach in air quotes and go get the best fit, which is just Dalton Connect here at five, mm -hmm. or do you go get a Maz Buzelis? Or actually in a perfect world, I would really consider trading down if you could. But uh, I'm assuming we're not gonna do trades here. So if not, we we could if you wanna trade the pick, but I think, I actually don't hate the connect idea because I think this is like a pick that like this front office needs to save their their jobs on. And if they take a developmental guy, yeah. like, and they're bad again next year, like that front office is gone. So like maybe connect could be in play there. Um, I, I, cause I like Colin and Castle as prospects specifically, but this team also needs shooting. And those guys have obviously a lot of question marks. I mean, so does Buzelis, but he's projected to be the best shooter of the three. We could, we could trade down if you want to. Um, like, do okay. you like, do you like maybe a team like Memphis, San Antonio? Um, okay. See, he's obviously got picks. We don't have to like do the full package. Like we could just say there theoretically would be other picks involved, but it'd just be five to move down to like 10 or something. Yeah. Or because Portland. the idea. The idea to trading down here would be okay, cool. We can just trade. We we can trade down a couple spots. Like Portland actually does make some sense here. Mm -hmm. Trade down a couple spots and still get the guy that we were thinking about getting at five, which would be uh, Don Connect. Yeah. So who's Portland? Who's Portland come up here for then? Just like whoever like their top wing option is here. Then we would I assume. Think, yeah, maybe it's Holland. Maybe it's Klingon if they like him a ton to take him Fair. at five. So I think that could make sense because I mean Portland has a bunch of picks. They have some nice seconds they can include in this deal as well. So I I'm cool with that. Okay. Because you're gonna be making this selection anyway at seven. So I guess you, <laughs> yeah. you can still be getting your guy at seven. So we'll do that. So we got Portland on the clock. So I like this. Like trades are cool on this because they'll happen. Yeah. So now if I'm Portland, I trade up and I I, I don't think I think I'm just gonna trade up and get one of our wings. So I think I'm gonna go Ron Holland. Because honestly, I think if I want Klingon, I think Klingon would have been there at seven. Mm -hmm. So we're going to trade up and get the best wing in our opinion. It is Ron Holland to me. Guy that's going to come in day one, be a really good defender, has a bunch of physical tools and, and if he is able to put it together, can be one of the three best players in this draft class, in my opinion, has a ton of offensive upside. And he started to trust the jumper a little bit more down the stretch. That gives you something to, to be optimistic about. Yeah, and I, I kind of like the fit for him in Portland because, like, Chauncey Bell is kind of a more defensive-minded guy, too. He can come in, learn from Jeremy Grant, who had yeah. his issues shooting the ball at Syracuse and early in his career. So that honestly could be a good prototype for Holland eventually to develop under. And I think there'd be a chance Charlotte could take Holland at six. So that would make sense for them trading up to get their wing for sure. Yeah. For Charlotte at six, man, there's, like, the Topic idea because, like, I like Shepard, and then you can maybe make LaMelo play off ball. But I think I'm going to look to get a little bit more defensive help. And I'm going to go Stefan Castle here. Uh, I think like they have plenty of shooting with guys on their team right now. Either it's man, uh, Nick Smith as complimentary guys. Uh, you have Brandon Miller, good shooter, Lamelo, great shooter. And Castle could even play, he can guard fours and, and depending on the team. He's got good size, a good frame. He can move his feet really well. He can cut, he can slash. So I do like Stefan Castle going to the Hornets here at six, but they'd have a lot of options for sure there. Yeah. Does... Does Stefan Castle saying he wants to be a point guard concern you at all if you're Charlotte? 
Yeah, I forgot that like he I know that his camp was saying that. Honestly, I think that gives me like if I was gonna go Topic share, which I thought about, I think I'm cool with that. I, I guess you're trying to convince Lamelo to play a new role, which I don't think is gonna be easy to do. Yeah. Um, so I I do see that if he's like I want to be a point guard and Lamelo is not cool at playing off ball, obviously that pick really wouldn't make a lot of sense, and then you can kind of pivot. But I yeah. think if Castle is cool playing off ball with Lamelo and then run the second unit if they stagger those minutes in a way and Lamelo hasn't been the healthiest guy over the last couple of years as well, so he could get plenty sure. of run as the as the point guard. So I guess it really depends if he's like, I'm not going anywhere where I'm not going to be the starting point guard. All right, that makes some sense. And then yeah. Detroit here, uh, it's Don Connect. We we traded back. We you know accumulated more draft assets to ultimately get the guy we were going to take at five. I think that's just perfect process from an organization standpoint. And Don Connect one the this one of the better fits. Detroit needs some more shooting on this roster. Try to space the floor a little bit more for for Kate Cunningham and Jay and Ivy. Um, I, I don't really consider a big here. I still love Jalen Duran, and I want to give him some more time to to show his NBA worth. So I like Don Connect here a lot for, for Detroit. Yeah, I like that too. And I think Connect like it looks better at seven than it does at five. So I, I kind of like that. And if you're picking up multiple seconds in that, like I, I think you do that for sure if Connect's your guy. Yeah. So that gives me eight san antonio now i'm like oh maybe dillingham at four because then you could go double up on guards and have dillingham play more off ball um with topic kind of running the show there but i'm actually gonna go i'm gonna go matzis buzelas here i think he could be someone in the half court that could play adjacent to Wemby in that front court he's got good size and if you have dillingham out there with maybe it's malachi Branham or kelton johnson and vassell and even sohan has shown some force spacing ability you can kind of hide buzelas's um outside shot in the early part of his career until it fully develops which i'm confident that it will because he was a good shooter in high school and the ignite was just a weird position and playing with wemby alongside him and he's getting all the attention and doubled then if you have dealing him out there as well buzelas yeah. can get some nice open shots so i'm gonna go the upside play with buzelas there at eight i i i like buzelas i will <laughs> say I don't know. I kind of walked away from doing my my evaluation. I'm like a little bit underwhelmed, but there was still a bunch of stuff that I really, really liked about him. Uh, my pro comp, and I, I kind of hate doing pro comps, but I said, screw it this year. Why not? I said Franz Wagner. Like if it really works out for Amos Buzelis, Franz Wagner, like kind of weird, unorthodox players in a way, but like the way you can utilize them as offensive players is so freaking fun. That's the one thing I will yeah. give the G League Ignite credit for. They utilized him in a bunch of different ways, whether it's coming off a screen, off ball screens, using him in pick and roll, post up, stuff like that. And I think this is the perfect system for him to, to be able to enable yeah. that while still having good defensive upside. I think. Definitely. I, I like that comparison as well. And I, I think like you look at him compared to like Holland, like Holland pretty sure was not a good shooter in high school either. It's funny because if you go through like their 247 rankings or like their max preps or like the McDonald's All-American like highlight of the player, if they're a good shooter in high school, they'll like, showcase that and they'll show why they're like a mcdonald's all-american and if they're not a good shooter they will just not show those stats whatsoever so it's kind of ha like hard for at least like somewhat of the public to see but buzelis was a good shooter in high school and you hope that this year was like an outlier and he has like the frauds trajectory of shooting yeah um memphis very easy pick i know nicola tobit is falling but this is donovan clinton <laughs> this is donovan clinton <laughs> for sure i mean like this is great for them you put you can move triple j to the four eventually and clinton is NBA ready for a team that is trying to win a championship next year. Like they, they're going to have those aspirations. Yeah. V very easy pick. And imagine he like actually develops somewhat of an outside shot as well. Like consistently. Yeah. That's like, you're going to have one of the more like versatile front courts in the league with John Moran coming back. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. I, I would yeah, love to. You, do you consider, uh, sorry to cut you off. Do you consider Topic here at 10? Says he's falling. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm taking Topic here. Um, I think actually Utah isn't a bad fit, and I know Keontae George showed some potential as a point guard last year, but I think Keontae George is going to be a little bit better off ball or is like a secondary um ball handler for this team, and maybe he comes off the bench and runs that second unit because I don't think Colin Sexton is the lead initiator of this team as well. But Topic I think would work work beautiful with Markinen and Hendricks and Kessler and pick and rolls there, and I'd love this for them. And there is a chance, like it's so weird with this draft too, with Topic's like variants in the top 10, because I've seen plenty of mocks where he goes 10, but I've seen also mocks where he goes two or three or four. So this would probably be the floor. I doubt he makes it out of the top 10, because I think Collier even has some top 10 hype as well. I think it really just depends. I think it's like, I think he probably goes either four to San Antonio, but then you go to like Detroit doesn't need a point guard. Charlotte doesn't need a point guard theoretically. Um, Detroit, Portland, Charlotte, like, 
Memphis doesn't need a point guard. Like there's a chance he could fall to 10 if he doesn't go at four or eight. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to do what every major mock draft has done. I'm not freaking drafting a guard for Chicago. <laughs> that That's driven me insane throughout this know, process. Right? Stop giving them a guard <laughs> to get buried in the in the rotation. Um, if, if I'm Chicago, I, this is also on my favorite pick. Sorry, OKC. I'm just giving Cody Williams, right? Mm -hmm. Nice long-term stash, has good size. I'm a fan of his like offensive upside as well. I think when he was healthy, his defensive tape was really, really good as well. Um, yeah, for me, it's going to be Cody Williams here at 11, and I'm really happy about this pick by Chicago. Yeah, I agree. Like, Cody for over Collier, 100%. And it's weird, too, for Cody because, like, he's, like, the opposite of Buzelis because he was a really poor shooter in high school and then shot, like, 40-plus percent on, like, not crazy volume last year for Colorado. Yeah. So I just, like, wonder, like, what's his real, um, like, shooting percentage is looking like. But I think, like, the form's good enough. And I think, like, even if they re-signed DeRozan, I feel like that'll be a fine place for him to develop over time as well. Yeah. All right. So for 12, I'm just going to go best player available. Someone that could help them um, off the bench. And I think can be a better playmaker than Casey Wallace next year. Still has defensive upside. And if they move on from Giddy this offseason, which I expect them to do, I'm going to have OKC go Collier. They could go the T. John Salon route um, if they want a little bit more upside. Maybe they go eat me, see if they want some rebounding help. But I think they'll do that either trade market or free agency. So I'm going to go Collier to the Thunder at 12. Okay. So if I'm Sacramento now here at 13, Kobe Walter would be fun, mm -hmm. but Devin Carter would also be fun. But I'm just mm -hmm. going to go again, one of my favorite fits. I'm just going to go Jared McCain, who okay. probably the best shooter in this draft class that I think has more upside and just skill than he's kind of getting credit for with just the situation at Duke where they had Tyrese Proctor's like to best utilize Proctor. He has to have the ball in his hands a lot more. They had Caleb Foster, they bought Jeremy Roach, they had a bunch of other dudes on that team that need the ball in their hands to be effective, where Jeremy McCain could be off ball and, and be an efficient player. But when I want to say it was Tyrese Proctor got hurt, and it was a stretch where he really got to see McCain get the on-ball role. He really, really played well at it. He can get to the rim. He's not, you know, a super like paint touch guy, but he can get there, is a good below the rim finisher, good playmaker. And just a smart player in general really competes defensively. So I'm going to throw him in there. You're probably going to lose Malik Monk this season. This is probably the best you can get if you go for like a cheaper Malik Monk replacement. Yeah, I think they're definitely probably, they're probably going to lose him because they can't afford him um, with his bird rights. So like McCain, like we shouldn't overthink this, right? Like he's a top 14 guy in this class. He should go in the lottery in like yeah. a weaker draft for sure. Um, and that could be a good replacement and he's NBA ready for them trying to make the playoffs uh, next year. So last yeah. week of the lottery, couple guys I like going to Portland here. Um, I assume they move Brogdon. Like, I don't mind Devin Carter to them here at 14, but I think I'm just going to go with the, mm, that's interesting because we want Holland at five. You know what? I actually think I'm going to go T. John Salon here. I, I think this is a crowded team right now. And Walter could kind of be someone that maybe won't be beneficial of just not getting reps right away. But I think Salon could be someone that could benefit from being, uh, it's either in the G League or um, depending on what they move with some of their veterans. And Salon has definitely played well um, for Gillette a little bit as of late and he's someone that I think has some good like complimentary upside in year one he could kind of play off ball a little bit he can cut he can kind of get offensive rebounds as well which I think would be a little bit more beneficial in Portland than Walter but I also could see the appeal in like Walter or if you wanted to go a big man maybe a Yib Misi there as well I think there's a lot of options for Portland at the end of the lottery there with the Warriors pick still kind of set ourselves up for Devin yeah, Carter <laughs> there it is that, that's that's still gonna be the pick this is just the the one of the most predictable picks in the draft if, if that guy is still there you solidify your backup point guard room really freaking good rebounder good defender i think a lot of the questions and why i think early on in the process a little bit low i was i was a little bit lower on him was because i think a lot of his questions the question marks you could have about him as a player regard him as a like shot creator especially self-created shot creator Mm -hmm. whereas at the nba level in miami he's not going to be taxed with being a, a self creator very often so really good player going to contribute right away for a for a win now team and miami definitely is trying to maximize this window as long as they possibly can for sure perfect fit there funny it ended up happening still 
Um, so we got the Sixers at uh, 16. Honestly, the way that this draft has fallen still, like I like a couple options for them. I like Eve Misi, I like De Silva, I like Jacoby Walter, who I'm going to go with here, who I do think could be a good shooter right away for them. Uh, there could be question marks defensively in the first couple years of his career, but I think he's athletic enough, strong enough, quick enough. Well, he'll be just fine. Obviously with Embiid as your kind of rip protector, they're going to be okay there. Uh, so I I'm going to go Walter. I think has a high upside and that's something Philadelphia could look here. Um, I think they need to draft a good rotational guy. A little bit more NBA ready could be De Silva, but I'm going to like Walter, who I think contribute off the bench for them next season. Yeah. So 17, this is the Lakers. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to yeah. do the Lakers in this scenario. So I don't know. I'm trying to think from a fan base perspective, not not try to piss <laughs> off the entire fan base. Yeah. Um, you have Khalil Ware. That's interesting. I personally like more the idea of Khalil Ware than I do the the player right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna go Tristan da Silva. Mm -hmm. I, I I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Just an NBA ready player that has good defensive technique, really good shooter, can just come in and contribute right away for you. And this also could be a move where we're saying, hey, look, Rui Hachimura, we are more willing to just trade you now in a scenario where the Lakers do keep and make the pick. If you weren't, if they didn't go Tristan da Silva, maybe you just go uh, Kalel Ware. Drawn Holmes, I'm a really big fan of. So, like, this is right around the range I would start thinking about him or even a Ryan Dunn. And you would just have to sell me on. You have a plan for his offense long term, but I don't think the Lakers would. So, I'm just going to go with the safest pick that's going to come in right away and contribute. Yeah, like that pick a ton for them. Um, so for the Lakers, do you have a prediction for the next head coach right now? Do you think it's gonna be JJ? I think it's gonna be JJ. Yeah, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's gonna be JJ. I know. I, I like the idea of JJ as a head coach. I just don't know if I like it with LeBron right now because I think I don't exactly. want him to be a scapegoat. I think he can actually be a good head coach in the league, and it's funny the the Pat Riley thing that came out that oh they're gonna God. compare him to Pat Riley in his early Laker days, but. I would be interested in seeing JJ coach's team post LeBron um, and kind of how sure. with the younger rebuilding team. Yeah. But it's it's going to be a weird fit right away. If he got the Washington job, I would be yeah. hell, or, or the Charlotte, Charlotte job. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, sure. let's go. It's just a weird team that like is going to go through another head coach and the Lakers team, how they're set it up right now, in my opinion, unless they land a Donovan Mitchell or somebody like that this offseason and they uh, get veteran minimums that can just over exceed their expectations. This Lakers team, I still think is a tier below um, it's just my opinion. Then like your Minnesota or your Dallas, yeah. your Denver, your OKC next year. So he's just set up to possibly lose in round one. And that's what the way this team is going to be built. Like, I just feel bad. And then all the pressure is going to come back on him. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I know. I'm, I'm in agreement. You got to make my, uh, my, my, my secondary team, Paulo Bencaro and the magic. I yeah. guess now make them happy. <laughs> I know. And, and they're on the way up for sure. Uh, so yeah, we got Orlando right here at 18. Um, they're a team that could look for some shooting here. Um, and kind of like some guard play. I mean, like, Ah, man, this is actually an interesting spot for them. Um, they could look at back up big as well with Eve Misi. I like Tower Smith a ton. Don't mind McCuller. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go with a little maybe different pick here. I'm actually going to go... I'm going to go Bub Carrington. Uh, I think he's going to be a good shooter right away. Oh, you like that pick? Let's go. I think Bub, like, he's one of the younger players in this draft. I still think he's 18 right now. And I wonder how they view Anthony Black as, like, the lead ball handler for this team mm -hmm. or the second unit or... He could be better off ball because I think he's going to be a good shooter in this league. And Carrington could play off ball. He could play on ball. He's quick mm -hmm. on defense. Um, and I think this is a team where you get a 6'5 point guard into the tall team kind of fits their mold as well. So I, I like Carrington to go in the, the late teens now. Yeah. one of, I, I love Carrington. This also really fits the timeline nicely if they went and there's some rumors that they might be interested in a guy like D'Angelo Russell, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if you go that route, Bub Carrington doesn't have to play right away. Where I do still think he probably needs a year to bulk up, have NBA level conditioning, stuff like that, straight to conditioning rather. And then he gets to sit behind a, a guy like D'Lo, who I still think can offer some, some, some stuff for a young guy like Bub Carrington. Mm -hmm. And then next year you could say, all right, D'Lo, we're going to start giving some of the stuff to, to Bub or whatever. And then, like you said, the, the Bub and Anthony Black future backcourt would be intriguing like the idea of it and then bubble also i think it's a pretty all right defender like especially yeah. at the point of attack so yeah I, I like that pick a lot for orlando cool all right toronto at 19 uh this is from the siakam trade <laughs> this is this is a really rough spot for uh yeah. toronto i think because all the guards that i would have really liked are gone right mm -hmm. here at 19. I know. like if bub Carrington was still here i'm probably sprinting to the board and doing that <laughs> if Devin Carter was somehow still here. I'm probably spending the board to do that. Um, I'm just going to go Yves Missy, I think. 
here in 19 for Toronto. We don't know the long-term outlook for a, a Yaka Pirtle, right? What they're going to do with Yaka Pirtle this summer or at the deadline, maybe. Eves Missy, just your prototypical shot blocking, rim protecting, lob threat big um, that is going to come in and I think can contribute for you right away. Um, sure, maybe you want to go more upside. I know you're a fan of Tyler Smith. Could probably mm -hmm. go with that route as well. Um, I'm just gonna go with I'm gonna go with use Missy here. At, at no, yeah, yeah, no, I like that a ton for sure. And I think like Pirtle didn't sign a super long term deal, so like you hope or don't. No, Pirtle did sign four years. I think it was Vucevic that signed three. Yeah, yeah, so I guess I I, just, I hope it's not like another Onyeka Kungu situation. But I think Eve Missy is good enough to be better than Pirtle. Or like you said, if they move on from him, he could be someone that can 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 kind of contribute for them um, at the five spot. I'm mocking this. Oh, man, I don't know what Cleveland because Cleveland, they're the one team this offseason. I have no idea what they're doing. Are they <laughs> extending Mitchell and then trading Garland or Allen? Are they trading Mitchell? Are they extending Mobley? Are they gonna fire Bickerstaff? I have no idea. Yeah. I'm gonna just mock it because I don't think he falls out of the top 20. I don't have a top 20 grade on him, but I think if they move Allen, they still, even if they keep Allen, I think they need some backup big man depth and they're NBA ready, trying to win now with Donovan Mitchell. I'm just gonna go Zach ED. Um, I don't I don't think I would take him here specifically. I would like maybe McCullough on this team or Keyshawn George or even Tower Smith for upside. Yeah. But I think the ready now talent of Edie, where he could just be a consistent six to seven points, six to seven rebounds off the bench, put him in drop coverage. I think he'll be fine. And if he's backing up Jared Allen or Evan Mobley at the five, it's not like you need a starter out of this pick. So you're just going with a very high floor, but very low ceiling player, in my opinion, in, in Zach Edie. So if I am New Orleans... I'm pretty upset that, that Zach Eady went the, the pick prior, but that's okay. Cause I think I'm just going to go Kalel Ware and, mm -hmm. and, and grab a guy that can play next to Zion space the floor for you. Um, I, I I've compared him as my, you know, high ceiling pick as a miles Turner. If everything really kind of pans out and that's the type of player that you want to put next to Zion, good shot blocker, really freak athlete just based off the, the combine testing. And then as has has some good traits. It's just can the, the motor and some of the other question marks come around. Definitely for where, yeah, like crazy good athlete. And, and I like them going big man there with like Valentinus being a free agent. And I think where fits maybe even better to Zion than like Zach Eady would because he could space the floor a little bit and is more athletic inside. Yeah. 22, uh, Phoenix, I expect this pick to be traded. I doubt they're making this pick on draft night. I'm just going to go Tyler Kolick here. I, I like them kind of getting a lead initiator for Devin Booker and Beal and KD to play off ball. He could come off the bench. He could start for you probably the most NBA ready guard out of anybody here left. That's like in consideration for this pick specifically. If they wanted to go, maybe Phil Pauski or Smith to add some competition to Nurkic, that's fine. They could even look at McCullough as a backup wing um, or Furphy or George, but I think they need another point guard in this room because they desperately miss Chris Paul. Yeah, I, absolutely. Milwaukee is such a weird team to draft mm -hmm. for. Um, I, I think, I think for Milwaukee, I, I kind of want to lean like a Kevin McCullough. I think a guy that that can play on both ends of the floor, which I just think this Milwaukee team needs. It's just more guys that can play on both sides of the ball. Has some injury concerns. He is an older prospect, but the older prospect thing that I don't really care about by Milwaukee because we're trying to win now anyway. Mm -hmm. Try to maximize this window, and if it really pans out, he could be the starter, like the, the two guard in, in this yeah. lineups with with him, uh, Dame, Middleton, and Giannis. So maybe you would have considered. I, I've always went like a Ryan Dunn. But I'm just going to go here for the sakes of this one. We're going to go Kevin McCuller. Yeah. No, I like that a ton. Like, let's not, like, watch Pat Connington get major minutes for this team anymore. Let's actually get yes. some guys that can create their shots, that can actually knock down shots in the clutch. And I think McCuller can do that. And I, I like them going older prospect as well. So that gives me my Knicks at 24. And you'll be doing a Knicks pick at 25. Um, yep. The way that this has fallen, I like this because they'll have the option of Keyshawn George, Johnny Furphy, or Tower Smith. Um, I do think that they're going to be able to bring back Isaiah Hornstein, but there's a chance they could move Mitchell Robinson this offseason. I'm mm -hmm. just going to go Tower Smith here just to get some big man depth. He could space the floor. I think he'd be able to play next to Julius Randle, or you can even throw like a variation of like Josh Hart at the four next to him or OJ Nanobi to help out with his defense because maybe there'll be some growing pains, but I think he'll project to being a good um, either defensive power forward or center in this league. And I think the jumper will translate. It looks good enough. Uh, it was good in the G League Ignite last year. And I know he didn't have like the greatest shooting at the combine, but it's such a small sample size to what we've seen from Tower Smith so far. So I think a higher upside play with the Knicks there at 24. Okay, so you go higher upside. So I think now if I'm New York here 25, I probably want to go get more of a, a, a win now piece. Mm -hmm. Jalen Tyson kind of makes some sense. I like that. Yeah. Um, 
because Tyson's like, I think way more NBA ready, at least uh, as someone that can get to his own spots and can create his own shots and finish at the rim more than like a, a Furphy or George's right now, for sure. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's go Jalen Tyson there at, at, at 25 for New York. A guy that, again, I, it took me a little bit of uh, more time to get around to him. I had a pretty firm second round grade on him. Now I have like a late first to early second round grade. This is right around the landing spot for him. A guy that can create his own shot, be a secondary scorer, good connected playmaking ability as well. And yeah, I like that pick as a combo with, with Tyler Smith for, for New York. Yeah, no, I like it a ton too. And he's strong, he's physical. And I think he can, yeah, be a good bench score for them next year. Um, so that gives me the Wizards at 20, 26, which is interesting for them. I don't know if there's a guard that I would take here. Like, I don't think I'd take like Juan Nunez here or maybe AJ Mitchell. I don't think I'd really like that fitter. Maybe KJ Simpson or Hunter Salas potentially. Yeah, I, I think I'm not going to go guard. I'm not a big fan of Filipowski. And I think this team needs a better defensive minded center. Would you and go Deron hope, Holmes here at 26? Uh, I would think about Deron Holmes. No, I, I don't hate Deron Holmes, too, because I actually think he's going to be a good shooter. I was thinking either him or I would go Furphy or George just to get more kind of athleticism and shooting. But you know what? I'm going to go Holmes. I mean, this team is such a glaring hole defensively, and I think he's ranked yeah. so low. I don't know why he's ranked so low in this, but I, I think yeah. he's someone that should go in the first round because the shot doesn't look great, but it goes in. And hey, honestly, he's physical. He hustles. He plays hard. Let's get that in Washington because that center room is disgusting right now. Yeah, it, it, it's awful. Uh, Minnesota here at 27. You kind of, you kind of mad that the board fell this way. Mm -hmm. Um, cause Tyler collect would be the perfect pick here. If he was somehow here on the board, Terrence Shannon's interesting become daddy yet. I have to finish my film stuff on him. I just don't think this is the right fit, but that's also a spot that could make some sense. Hmm. Hey, I hate drafting for Minnesota. <laughs> I know it's tough because, like, I mean, if they prioritize defense, which they do, like, that could be Ryan Dunn. I don't think they should take a big man. Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, kind of like a guard you need. And who has like the best playmaking ability here? George, maybe. Yeah, because I think he's a good defender, and I don't think he needs to contribute right away. And this team, I mean, it would be nice if they they draft a player that's going to contribute next year. But I think they're okay with him being at least a project play. Yeah, I, just, I like the, I like the idea. Yeah, yeah, let's go Keyshawn George. Let's go Keyshawn George here at 27. A guy that I do think is a first-round pick. If anything, you're going, I don't know if he's quite BPA, but like really good value still that, like you said, has the upside to be a really good 3 and D player with some potential shot-making, shot-creating ability as well. So we're going to go Keyshawn George there. Yeah, it's funny too, because like you kind of look at like their recent picks and like uh, in past drafts, and it was the 22 draft where they took uh, Wendell Moore like late in the first round and they traded like with Dallas for him. And he's just done nothing in his first two years, which is kind of a shame because I thought he was going to do something at a Duke and there was like Nemhard on the board and Jovich um, and even yeah. uh, Peyton Watson. I love Nemhard in that draft. I know, I had right? A I had a first round grade on Nemhard. And Nemhard would be perfect for this Minnesota team too, just like off the bench, guard, takes good shots, plays defense. But. Yeah, so we got Denver 28. Um, obviously, disappointing exit. I think they've had some disappointing play to some guys this year. Uh, Zeke Naji, probably notably. We'll see what KCP, like what happens with him this offseason. I think they could go. I think let's just get some shooting here. Um, I'm just going to get Johnny Furphy here. Uh, last yep. Kansas pick was great in Christian Brown. I think Furphy's shot is NBA ready. Uh, there's going to be some defensive questions, some feel for the game. Uh, he'll benefit from being in the G League. But I think they're no stranger to those picks being what they did with Peyton Watson and he had some flashes this year. So I'm going to go Furphy there at 28, which I actually really like that fit for him a ton. So you go with Nikola Topicic at, at 10. Mm -hmm. This is more just fit. And I actually think he can replace something that they, they had in a Kelly Olenek. This is the perfect replacement for that, right? He can provide some stretch five ability. can shoot the ball. Give me Kyle Filipowski. Um, that, I understand why he's such a polarizing player. Um, I, I fully finished my grade on him. I think a week and a half ago, maybe like right after we edited our uh, the mock on on my on my pod. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> like he, when he's playing well, it's like, oh, oh crap! Like this is a really good basketball player, and it's just so many times. But then even a given game, you're like, oh, what what was that, Kyle Filipowski? Or that's a really ugly shot. Or man, we didn't guard the post well on that possession. But yeah. The, the fun stuff is really fun. Really nice connective playmaker. He's going to be such a offensive chess piece for Will Hardy that I would be really, really excited about. 
And yeah, we're going to go Filipowski here for the Jazz. Yeah, I mean, that's good value at 29 for sure. And that's like the Oshie Baji pick that they traded like Olenek for. And I think getting Filipowski is good there on a four-year contract. Um, and just comes off the bench, not really too much uh, stress there. I was going to actually have him go to Boston at 30. So, okay. I mean, I hate like picking 30 and like not a two-round mock because there's so many guys I want to talk about. Either it's done or camp christie i was gonna say there. i would love done if, yeah. if i had the 30 pick with boston i would have said you know what screw it who cares offense we're just know, gonna right? get <laughs> like Nicole, defender. Uh, for sure like nicola jurisic is such a fun prospect damn there's so many guys here but yeah i, I think done i'm gonna just have him go to boston here um if you have him playing with like sam hauser and Payne pritchard and notable shooters in that second unit and even if yeah it's like al horford that's back um done can you can kind of hide that shooting a little bit um yeah. and just get like an elite defender that maybe maybe just lock him in the gym with sam Hauser this offseason and he'll figure something out so uh that will be the last pick i don't i actually had this set as a two round but we're just gonna do first round um out of all these picks i guess like maybe what's your favorite pick that that we made here I think like bro what why not just take a gamble on a freak athlete one of the best athletes pound for pound this draft class i I don't want to use the word generational, but whatever's like a step down from generational as a defender, that's Ryan Dunn for me. So I love that pick. Um, I I love the thought process for 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 both Portland and Detroit. Actually, Portland, you double dip, you get probably in my opinion the, the best wing in this class, and, and Ron Holland at five. You trade up to get him. You don't allow Charlotte to do that, and then you double dip against Don Saloon here at fourteen. And then I mean Detroit. I mean we talked about it. Detroit getting the guy they were going to get at at five trading back getting more draft assets and still just getting him at seven where one it just sounds better and you get more draft capital um i like that i like san antonio's draft a lot i know i said i was kind of underwhelmed when i when i did my eval on as Buzelas, but there was a spot where it would make sense and you give them the the right development system you give them the right group of players you put them next to wemby and rob dillingham long term like that's a really intriguing trio of, of young guys Utah had a good drive. I, I like a, I like a lot of these picks, part man. What about you? Definitely. Um, I'm trying to think. I I, I love the idea of Reed Shepard in Houston for sure. I think he's got a super high floor, and even if he's never going to be an All Star caliber guard, I think he's going to do so many things well, and he's not going to hurt you. I honestly like haven't mocked connect to the Pistons at all, but I love the idea of it. I think like why take a project player for this team like a hollander castle that you're just gonna add another non-shooter to this team next year may stump some other guys development get connect who can come in right away and be a starter for you and be a scorer take the load off Cade. i'm a fan of that especially if they can trade down and get connect i think that's my that's my favorite pick in the top 10 that i've never made before yeah for sure and then also shout out bub carrington to the yeah. uh, Orlando magic there we go uh yeah I, I like that one a ton for orlando and i think they'll have some good options there at 18. um so yeah that's gonna pretty much finish up our first round mock draft thanks for coming on sean i appreciate it yeah for sure man thanks for thanks for having me on yeah this was a a ton of fun glad we were able to do another one of these yeah for sure and you can follow uh sean on twitter too if, especially if you're a lakers fan definitely recommend it for sure um and uh yeah we'll catch you guys later peace